transportation now let us look at the human transport system transportation is an important life process our transport system is composed of one blood to transport different materials two heart to pump the blood and three blood vessels to supply the blood to different body parts and four blood platelets to repair the damaged blood vessels blood acts as a transporter of food oxygen and waste materials within our bodies blood is a type of fluid connective tissue it is composed of plasma and blood cells plasma carries nutrients carbon dioxide salts and nitrogenous wastes in dissolved form whereas oxygen is transported by red blood cells the pumping organ that we have in our body is heart just like how an electric motor pumps water in the pipes heart pumps the blood into the blood vessels our heart is a muscular organ it is in the size of our fist heart does two important jobs the first job is to collect deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body and send it to the lungs for oxygenation this task is done by the right side chambers of the heart the second job is to collect the oxygenated blood from the lungs and supply it to the different parts of the body this task is done by the left side chambers of the heart but these two tasks are performed at the same time at first left atrium and right atrium gets relaxed or dilated then left atrium gets the oxygenated blood from the lungs right atrium gets the deoxygenated blood from the body parts now both these chambers get contracted and pump the blood into the bottom chambers now the left ventricle get contracted and sends the oxygenated blood to the body parts at the same time right ventricle pumps the deoxygenated blood to lungs ventricles possesses thicker muscular walls compared to atria because they need to pump blood to various organs valves prevent the backward flow of blood during the contraction of atria or ventricles heart structure in animals with different energy needs birds and mammals have a four chambered heart with complete separation between the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood the separation of this right and left sides of the heart prevents oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing if the mixed blood is supplied to the body the amount of oxygen supply decreases and the energy production also decreases this separation allows for efficient oxygen delivery to meet their high energy demands amphibians and reptiles they have three chambered hearts allowing some mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood fishes they have two chambered hearts blood is pumped to the gills for oxygenation and then directly to the rest of the body this type of circulation is called single circuit circulation because in a complete cycle of circulation the blood flows through the heart only once double circuit circulation in mammals the blood travels through the heart twice in one complete cycle of blood circulation one time between heart and lungs and the second time between heart and body parts so this type of circulation is called double circuit circulation or double circulation now we will study about the blood and blood vessels in our bodies we have three different types of blood vessels named as arteries veins and capillaries arteries carry the oxygenated blood from heart to different parts of the body heart pumps the blood into arteries with great pressure so arteries have thick and elastic walls to resist this blood pressure veins collect the deoxygenated blood from body parts and carry it to the heart veins do not have thick walls since the pressure of blood is low in veins but veins have valves in them due to these valves the flow of blood takes place only in one direction to supply the materials to cells arteries split into thin fine tubules called capillaries the other ends of these capillaries join together again to form the veins blood pressure blood pressure refers to the force exerted by blood against the walls of blood vessels arteries 
typically experience high blood pressure compared to veins. Systolic pressure denotes the pressure in arteries during ventricular contraction, while diastolic pressure indicates the pressure during ventricular relaxation. Normal blood pressure is around 120 mmHg systolic and 80 mmHg diastolic. A spigmo manometer is used to measure blood pressure. Any obstruction or blocks formed in the arteries leads to high blood pressure or hypertension. If this is not treated, it may lead to rupture of blood vessels and leads to serious problems. Repair of damaged blood vessels If our blood vessels are cut in any accident, blood flows out through these blood vessels. This leads to 1. Loss of blood and 2. Decrease of pressure in the circulatory system. To stop the bleeding, blood platelets move to the site of leakage and plug the cut temporarily. Permanent clotting of blood takes by the help of various clotting factors present in the plasma of the blood. Here is a question for you. If the plasma contains blood clotting factors, why don't they clot the blood in the blood vessels? If you know the answer, please write it in the comments. Lymphatic system Just like blood circulatory system, we have another system in our body called as lymphatic system. Lymph flows in this system. Lymph is a colorless fluid. The plasma, proteins and some blood cells escapes out through the small pores present in the walls of the capillaries. They get accumulated in the intercellular spaces of different tissues. Later this fluid becomes the lymph. It is similar to the plasma of blood but colorless and contains less protein. This lymph enters the lymphatic vessels through the lymph capillaries. Finally, these lymph vessels are open into the large veins. Lymphatic system does two important jobs. The first job of lymph is to absorb the digested fats in the intestines. We can see the lymph vessels in the villi of the small intestine, where the absorption of nutrients takes place. The second task is to collect the extracellular fluid and deposits it into the bloodstream. This is all about human transport system. Now let us study the transport system in plants. Transportation in plants. Plants do not move and plant bodies have a large proportion of dead cells in many of their tissues. Because of these reasons, plants require very less energy and have a slow transport system. In plants, the transport of food and water takes place by two different types of tissues. They are xylem and phloem. Transport of water. Xylem tissue in plants consists of interconnected vessels and tracheids found in roots, stems and leaves forming channels for water transport. Now we will see how the water enters into the roots. The cells of the roots that come in contact with the soil actively takes the ions from the soil into them. Due to this kind of active transport of ions, the concentration difference of ions develops between soil and root cells. To balance this difference, water enters the roots. This steady inflow of water into the root xylem creates a continuous column of water pushing it upwards. However, this pressure alone may not be enough to move water up to great heights in plants. Plants use transpiration, the loss of water vapor through stomata in leaves to pull water from the xylem in roots. Transpiration creates a suction effect, aiding in the absorption and upward movement of water and dissolved minerals from roots to leaves. Transpiration also helps in regulating plant temperature. Root pressure is more significant in water transport at night, while during the day, transpiration becomes the primary driving force for water movement in the xylem. Transport of food and other substances the food that is prepared in the leaves of the plants during photosynthesis has to be supplied to different parts of the plants. This process is called translocation. The translocation of food materials like glucose takes place through phloem tissue in plants. This translocation takes place in both upwards and in downwards direction. Energy is required for the process of translocation. Cells get this energy from ATP. At first, with the use of energy from ATP, sucrose enters the phloem tissue. 
then the osmotic pressure inside the phloem tissue increases. Now, due to this osmotic pressure, water enters the phloem tissues. Now with this pressure, food materials are taken to different tissues of the plant. Phloem transports the food as per the requirements of the plants. For example, in spring season, buds need more food material for flowering. Then the phloem supplies the food from stem or root. Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to Great Booster channel. Press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Check the description to find links of other useful videos. Check the end screens for our new videos.